What I want to talk about specifically is this upstart company called Rivian, which is trying to make waves in the electric car market. And they released a truck and an SUV at the LA Auto Show, which was just recently here in November. And before we decided to do this webcast, you hadn't even heard of Rivian. I hadn't heard of the Rivian until an hour ago. And I've decided that this vehicle has the highest potential to really impress me and get me excited, but it also has the highest ability to just disappoint me. So we are talking a truck and an SUV. In base mode, we're talking 200 mile range, which seems to be the target. And if you wanna pay extra, they have a 400 mile range. Approach angles in the 30s, departures in the 30s, breakovers near the 30s, even 26 degrees on the long wheelbase truck. And you usually don't get breakovers that high on a long wheelbase. The Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro has a 19.1 degree breakover angle. This Rivian is sitting at 26 in off-road mode because it has the air suspension like Land Rover and, and some of these newer vehicles. You know, breakover of 26, that means you're better than the Jeep JK Wrangler in any trim. Um, you know, better than any Toyota in any trim. And that's the truck. You're pushing 30 in the, in the SUV. And that's the off-road stuff. I mean, these guys are focused about off-road, but it's electric. And what does that give us, Carl? Before we go on, I want to state I'm not an electrical uh, car guru. I don't know a lot about electrical cars. I haven't researched them because my interest is the off-highway use of vehicles. And there just hasn't been many options for that. So there's going to be a lot of speculation here that we're not sure about. And so let us know when we're wrong. I'm sure our listeners will let us know if we said something wrong. You mentioned the the 19 degree Tacoma. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Tacoma, but um, I don't like that breakover angle. That's my biggest drawback of the Tacoma. Now, this doesn't have that drawback, which is awesome. And then you add on um, there the potential benefits of being an electric car, and I'm excited. Me personally, I don't know why anybody would want a 200 mile range. Um, I live in rural Colorado. The nearest big city isn't even big, and that's 50 miles away. And outside of that, everything is 300 miles away from me. And I can do that on a gas tank in my car, in my Sequoia or my Forerunner. I can't do that in a gas tank if it's only 200 mile. Well, a charge. I shouldn't say gas tank. So I would I would go for the 400 mile option. But I like that they have that option. That speculation is a ton of fun. I mean, I mean, yeah. even if Rivian doesn't do it. Someone will. And, and what is some of the awesome stuff we can get with an electric motor that we just can't get with a gas that we currently have? The first thing I want to mention is the potential for better range off-road or off-highway. There's two things that cause us to have poor gas mileage when we are on a dirt road, especially when we're going slow, rock crawling or anything like that. The first one is we spend so much time idling, so much time letting the engine run without moving. That just, you know, you, the idling is fairly efficient, but still when you're doing it for eight hours, you know, only moving slowly, it makes a big difference. So we're saving battery life because when you're not moving, you're not using power. And I assume uh, electric motors, you have a much more constant torque curve for the motor and you don't have the shifting and all the other things. And so you're going to be more efficient at a slow speed as compared to a gas engine. I don't know what you think of that. Now with regener regenerative braking, let's say we go up to the top of engineer pass and we're on our way down and we can watch it in our gas vehicles. We put it in four low, we go to first gear and we do this because the descent is so steep that you need that gearing to hold you slow enough so you're not being you know, a danger to you and to other people and so that you can have control. You're winding out that transfer case to go down. And on an electric vehicle now, you're dropping from 12,000 feet to 8,000 feet and you're regenerative braking now. I mean, you're charging your vehicle on the way down instead of using your brakes. It just seems like a good idea. Now that brings up something I didn't think of. Hopefully the regenerative braking is strong enough 
that it will slow you down so you're not riding your actual brakes. Because that's another reason I, you know, you, you shift down so you don't use your brakes. But you're, you're absolutely correct. If you don't have the regenerative braking set up to slow you down like you do in first gear low range of a Jeep Rubicon, you're going to have to ride your brake. That would be a bad negative to this vehicle. You know, there's a lot of roads we go on, especially in Colorado over the mountains. And, you know, it's a few hours to get down from 12,000 feet to 8,000 feet on a dirt road. And you will burn up through your brakes. Your brakes don't get as, uh, they don't work as well if you're riding the brakes the whole time. It can cause a lot of issues. If the regenerative braking can be tied into like the computer controlled descent control, and you're not burning up the brakes and you're regenerating that, th this can be phenomenal. This is electric cars. You can put the motor right on the wheel and just drive the wheel directly from the motor. So that means no transmission, no axle, no uh, transfer case. Each wheel has its own motor. Being able to control each tire 100% independent of all the others just raises so many possibilities of what you could do off-road. And even then, the guy will say, well, if I just get my Jeep and put lockers front and rear, when, when you're locked up, and you get in those high torque situations, what breaks? Your axle. Well, it might it might be your axle. It might be your drive line. It might be, you know, these things bind up because you're locked. And on this electric thing, let, let's talk worst case scenario. Something binds up. What happens to it? You have one motor go down. And if there's any way on the trail you can decouple this motor, <laughs> you've got three drive motors three working wheels. to get you out. And I think even trail repairs, you, you got less moving parts. You've got torque to where you need it. We don't know how Rivian has had this thing programmed. What, what you want in four low when you run the gas pedal is you want linear application of torque. You want more than that. You want linear application of torque over a large distance. Yes. Yes. And if there's one thing I can get, if any GM engineer is here, is learn how to map your throttle. Because when you give it the gas on a Chevy, it lurches forward and that's fun on the pavement. But when you're off road and you lurch it and you've got 40, 50% of your torque right then, when you're navigating technical terrain, that is not the way you want it to be. You want control. Yes. And if they've mapped this, if Rivian has mapped this right with four individual motors at each corner of the vehicle, I think technical terrain is going to be a whole lot easier to navigate. I want a low range mode. I don't know what to call it because I assume there's no gears changing, but I want a mode that remaps the, the accelerator. I essentially want me to go zero to 20 as slowly. Like I want to be able to floor it and not get to 60 fast. I want to be able to have a lot of play in my accelerated pedal to control speeds at a low speed. Um, and all that is, is just changing your, your mapping that can be done with programming. This is all computer anyway. Your little dial for your modes, right? When we spin that dial to rock Rivian, if you're listening, when we are in rock mode, we don't want to go faster than 20 miles an hour. I want that control to be able to move the vehicle without spinning tires. And in snow, you need that control even more, uh, rock crawling. You want that control even more, um, you know, it's for essentially a traction control. And this would um, make the traction control, it could be phenomenal. You could have it set up to, to slowly ramp up until you're essentially like a locked vehicle, but maybe even better, where you're giving more power to the tires that need it, um, the ones that have traction. And they could control that with programming. They could, they, they could make it better than a locked vehicle, um, which, which would be phenomenal. And they could make the traction control just just be stellar uh, if they program it right. So Rivian, if you're listening, we're a new channel. We're young. You guys are a young company. Come on, throw us a bone here. I'll take the SUV. Carl will take the truck. Let's, let's test this thing in Moab. Let's test it in Colorado. Let's make it work. If you guys enjoyed this short little conversation on the Rivian, check out our channel. We're going to have more coming as far as the webcasts go. We also have our off tracks segment which is short little reviews of trails that might be in your area. If you find yourself in the Utah and Colorado area, please like and subscribe, comment below. That really helps us out as far as how YouTube 
um, promotes us and um, thanks for watching.